The NVIDIA Shield Android TV console, it's a top-of-its-class Android TV box and console combination. It's sporting the flagship SoC otherwise known as System on a Chip or in layman's terms a processor and graphics chip combination. This chip is named the NVIDIA Tegra X1 and it's the most powerful mobile processing unit sold to the public so far as of May 5, 2016. This box has a sleek and stylish physical design with angled diamond-esque edges and a green neon power light with a variable luminosity setting, but what really sets the Shield TV console apart from most units is its ability to be able to game at PC-level graphics power. This is all thanks to both the X1 chip's 256 CUDA core architecture of its graphics portion and its raw processing side of the SoC being far higher than we've seen previously from mobile chipset devices. It's also based on the fact that NVIDIA have a cloud gaming service where games can be streamed live from their beastly gaming server allowing most of the workload to be put on their machine. There is however some drawback to this method of gaming one you must have internet access, although that's pretty run-of-the-mill these days with all the network-reliant devices we have requiring updates are networking for our online play, so number two would be the other catch you are going to need to pay what I consider a pretty penny for the privilege to play the games as it's a subscription service named GeForce Now, and when I say a pretty penny I mean the amount of 8 English pounds that's quite high considering that the service only has a library of 80 games mostly dated titles and very few high end triple a titles there to choose say maybe Mad Max and Tomb Raider, it's more or less seemingly a test phase in my opinion a way to test the water with the new game streaming service from Nvidia, but you can also buy titles but be expecting to pay higher for these than a month's GeForce Now subscription in nearly all the cases they average £10 or more, I can't say it's a great or a really bad idea to cloud stream but the titles amounting to just a mere over 80 figure and that's discounting many as a member to play as some as I said are purchased, then it's looking a little pricey yet, maybe the title library will grow but time will tell, but most of the cloud companies have tried and failed to privately sell streaming services example on live, so I'm not holding my breath but would like to see a lot more come out. On the plus side the box can use a limited to Android TVOS version of Play Store meaning TVOS titles only appear for the apps and games, some newer releases have been trickling slowly in but I think the young Android TVOS has much more to do to entice Shield TV owners to part with cash considering predominantly mediocre and sub-par titles are abundant and triple a titles are all but non-existent, but have no illusion of the triple a titles that do exist some gems do shine, through and occasionally we get a sale or two at half price on selected titles, but even with its flaws the Shield TV has some pros in the form of a controller included with both models that allows using wired 3.5mm jack type headphones through its port so you can listen to your console in peace without disturbing anyone, or for the kids so they don't get in trouble blasting zombies one in the morning on a school night as mum and dad sleep blissfully unaware he the controller is decent build not immensive but decent quality with reasonable battery life and there's hdmi full-sized ethernet and micro sd ports at the back of the console it's extremely quick copying and extracting archives and files using file managers there's a fair few games out there that do work to keep you entertained and it does have great potential oh did i forget to mention you can voice search in youtube and on the desktop it gives you media search via the nvidia button in the middle of the controller if you tap it also there is volume control on the controller as well it's actively cooled with a fan for longer uptimes and according to nvidia it can be continuously used they have no uptime limit as i ask them although i movies Turn mine off after a few hours to be on the safe side. The media streaming is very very good with 4K content playable. You can get full color option for the 1080p HD as well making it look way more 4K more pretty than basic HD, I just wish they had a few more high profile games and that we could use every app store app because Android TV seems to be an acquired taste be it for the developer or the maker Google which I do not know here, but the apps you bought for another TV box or phone have a very good chance of not working so do be prepared to start collecting Android TV games and apps at cost to get the best experience, the Shield Android TV comes with two flavors a 16GB and 500GB Pro models, the 16GB 
USB-B can have a USB hard drive connected as internal storage via settings then storage section in the main system settings window it will cost you £149 for the 16GB unless you find it cheaper you get everything needed in the box to go, and the Pro has an internal 500GB drive which is part SSD and part normal drive this is called hybrid, this makes the Pro faster than a basic 16GB model, at £220 but it includes the small lightweight remote as well as the controller, I did hear they had a pack with two controllers and the remote at £220 as well but don't quote me there, both can or will already be updated to the Android 6 Marshmallow Android TVO's operating system, the 16GB I use I used a 1TB USB 3 hard drive to boost it to 0.90GB internet storage space, all in all it's a great device both versions are or have the grunt to blow the competition out of the water and if Nvidia boost the GeForce Now and Play Store and Shield Games libraries to have a lot more titles then you're on to a winner if you want something with grunt and using a mere 25 watts peak energy consumption then this is the the beast for you, just don't think of it as a replacement to a gaming rig or PS4 and Xbox One console it's more a standalone choice of personal preference for the hardcore Android gaming fanbase or people that want to step up to Android gaming from mediocre phones and TV box even high-end models that can't compete with the Shield Android TV, S graphical and processing performance. I hope you enjoyed the review this is MODIT saying goodbye and game on.